miles to Chicago. We got a full tank of gas, half a pack of cigarettes. It's dark, and we're wearing sunglasses. Hit it. Everybody. Welcome to another Long Island Blues Warehouse. As always, recorded at the world-renowned EKO Studios, Deer Park, New York, the official studio of the Long Island Blues Warehouse. And welcome. I'm your host, Mark Klein. Thank you again for joining us uh, as we approach episode number... Where are we? Webisode se- 75. 75. Tonight's... Very cool, very cool. And another 168 to go, I think, give or take a few. Tonight, we're talking to a young artist that has been playing to live audiences for about two years now. She has had the privilege of performing at the world-famous Apollo Theater five times so far. And this past summer, released her debut album. Tonight, we say hello to this week's featured artist, Olivia Castriata. This week's featured artist, Olivia Castriata. Olivia! Yeah. Beautifully done, kiddo. Thank you so Beautifully much. Beautifully done. I got to start you. by telling you that Steve and I were just in the booth, Steve the head, the engineer, uh, talking about the beautiful, sweet tone you have to your voice. Thank you. Beautifully done. Beautifully done. Let's talk about some background and history, if we can. Let's talk about when you began. Yeah. You started singing, if I had to guess, at a very early age. The first performance that I recall, because I've seen a picture, 
is when I was two at um, the state fair. H2 at the H2. state H2. fair. I sang the Funky Chicken at uh, the York Fair in no Pennsylvania. No kidding. Yeah. How'd you do? It was like a rainbow jumpsuit, and it was like fluffy all around. You're like still pretty tutu. young. You're, you must yeah. remember that. I, I just have a picture, and that's <laughs> why. <laughs> yeah. I'm, I'm teasing, obviously. <laughs> you, uh, you know, it's funny because most musicians, when they talk about their first performance at age two, it's at home in a recital to their family or in church or something like that. For you, it was a state fair. I was on the stage. Yeah. How did you, <laughs> how did you get involved in playing on, in a state fair? Did mom and dad just say we got to get her involved in this, and I, I you were no receptive idea. to it? I have no idea. My my family's like a musical family, though. My uh, great grandpa used to sing opera, and my grandmother sings opera, and she sings at church, and she has a beautiful soprano one. No voice. kidding. Yeah. Mom and dad are they musicians as well? Oh, my mom sings. She's pretty good. My dad is not. Not but so like, much. My grandparents, they're musical. The siblings? Uh, Brothers no. and sisters? <laughs> I have siblings. They but they n nothing musical. Well, my brother writes, but he's also a biochemist, and he ah. like taught himself how to play piano. He wrote a song on my album, but it all happened like very much by chance. Wow. Yeah. Very cool. Yeah. Let's talk about junior high and high school days. Are you involved in school choir, battle of the bands? Do you have a band going? What are you doing musically in, in junior high and high school? Um, I was in musicals, and I was in choir and select ensemble. And you graduate and 12th grade next year. <laughs> I'd be just, you'd, you'd so, uh, okay, a few years, you're a few years older. A little older than Not that, much, yeah. though, yeah. not much. <laughs> forgive um, me, forgive me. You I did, did the jazz But you're a bit of an old too. soul, if I may say. Yeah, a little a bit. Definite old soul. <laughs> Um, yeah, you could definitely pass for someone that's still in school, high school, if you don't that's mind sweet. my saying. I appreciate you saying that, but um, you Thank definitely, you. you just, you just have a, you just very young, you're a young performer. You're yeah. a young performer with that old soul. Let's, so what do we, what do we do in high school, out of high school? Are you playing in bars illegally underage? No, I, d I never broke a role in my high school life, basically. <laughs> Why, why does your guitar the rule player... Breaking, the rule breaking came later, I guess. The rule college. breaking came <laughs> later. But uh, I was in choir and I did musicals. And then in college, I was in a acapella group um, called Rhapsody. Uh, so that was cool. But what, I, what were you singing? What kind of songs were you singing? We just sang pop covers. It was, it was really fun. I could see yeah. it. I could yeah. see it. It was great. Um, but I studied communication. So I didn't study music in school. Because I couldn't read music, and I was really, like, faltered by that. 95% yeah. of the musicians on Long Island that perform on this stage can't read charts either. Yeah. I noticed your guys have charts yeah. for one or two of your songs, which I find interesting. But most musicians can't read charts. So yeah. what about tab? Can you read tablature? No. Okay. All right. <laughs> no. Well, great beginning for it you, It just kiddo. happens up here, and then it just comes out. Uh, that's a great <laughs> format. And, and yeah. it ain't broke, so don't fix it. Yeah. So. It ain't broke, so don't fix it. Can we put you guys back to work? Yeah. We're going to do, do a couple more, and then we're going to come back and chat more later. What are we doing next? Next, we're going to do a Nina Simone cover, Be My Husband. You good to go? Yeah. Well, once again on the Blues Warehouse, we're going to keep it moving with Olivia Castriata. of your life singing oh daddy I'm not love me good oh daddy I'm not love me good oh daddy I'm now love me good oh daddy now love me good please don't treat me so dog on me please don't treat so dog on me oh please don't treat me so dog on me you're the meanest man i have ever seen singing oh daddy i'm now love me good oh daddy i'm now love me good oh daddy i'm now love me Love me good
not the first girl thinking that you wanted to. There are way more things that I just gotta see, and you've got way too much loving for me. I ain't no one woman, man, baby, use the same bed. You've got that heart of gold, you're so innocent, that's why you've got to know, baby, I've got to go. You are more than one night, baby, I won't be back for more. I still see having you, they say it I've been a bad. Your window, I just got to know. There are way more things that I just gotta see, and you got way too much loving for me. I ain't no one woman, man, barely use the same bed. You got that heart of gold, your soul, and I said, That's why you got to know, baby. I got to go. You were more than one night, baby. I won't be back for more. Great job, kiddo. Thank you, thank you. The tone to your voice is just, it's like mesmerizing. Thanks I have to so tell you, I have to tell you on Fridays, my live radio show at 90.1 FM, 8 to 10, best of the blues from the local scene to the icons. When that show's over, I head over to Stony Brook Children's Hospital and I work with sick kids. Oh yeah, I know, I wanna come. I bring musicians up to play for the kids every week. Do you do covers? Yeah. Like a wide variety of because, God, I have to bring you up for that. I would the love tone it. to your voice, that's what we need. <laughs> what you, you do, I wish there was more of out there. I mean, there's an overabundance of great players that make sense, but you are definitely a musician I need to bring up there. You and your guitarist. Uh, yeah. It's either solos or duets. Do you play an instrument? I don't. No, All right, so it would, be, it would be you and your guitar player. Yeah. And just come up and put smiles on faces of sick kids that are in no mood to smile. And boy, would you guys hit that out of the park. Yeah. So please, let's talk about that more. Let's do it. Let's, uh, let's talk about an incredible highlight in your short career. We've had uh, a, a musician friend of mine on Long Island passed away about eight or nine years ago, Little Buster of Little Buster and the Soul Brothers. Little Buster won Amateur Night at the Apollo in 1962. Wow, that's awesome. He's the la There's one other musician, Sam Bluesman Taylor, who played with Ike and Tina. He played with Joey D and the Starlighters. If you guys remember the song The Peppermint Twist, if you look, you know, are you familiar with that song? Sing, sing a little bit. I'm not singing any of it. <laughs> look it up on, on YouTube. Um, in the 75 shows we've done here, those are two guys that I've known in, in over 20 years that have played at the Apollo. You're the third. You played at the Apollo, the world famous Apollo Theater, yeah, five times now times. in your short career. Yeah. Yeah. Let's talk about the first time. All right, cool. How did you get that opportunity? So the first time happened because I started working a nine to five job and I hated it so much. And I was like, I just need to sing. So I started Googling like, what, where can I audition and stuff? And I found Amateur Night was having auditions. So I went and I waited in line for like five hours. 
I sang, and then... That's it? Only five hours? Yeah. Well, they only accept 300 people. I see. So 300 people can audition. That's it. I would have guessed you would have needed to camp out for there for like three days. No. It was only five hours. Five hours. Not too yeah. bad. Not too bad. Not too bad. So uh, then I auditioned. Right after I auditioned, they were like, all right, you're coming back this day, okay? And I was like, great. And then I... I like wanted to put my two weeks notice in at my nine to five anyways, and this was just like the perfect opportunity because because I, I thought I was just gonna win and you be a took pop that star. As, you took that as the sign. <laughs> yeah, that was the sign that I needed. So then I quit my job, sang at the Apollo, uh, sang at the Apollo the week after that, and then since then I've done it five times now. They just keep asking you back. Um, well, after you audition and you make it through, you can come back. Um, each year and then once you come back and if you place then you go back again in the same year so i've placed twice and gone back twice what an incredible incredible honor yeah, and you're in your cool. very young career five times standing on the apollo stage performing and how receptive was the audience to you great now the audience today terrifying. the past couple of years the audience isn't as bad as they used to be right no but because in the, if you if i don't know if you remember you're so young forgive me 15, 20, 25, 30 years ago, the audiences were notorious for like spitting up and chewing out the, the, the artists that would play. They, any reason to boo somebody and to make them run off the stage crying, yeah. they're not that, that aggressive today, are well, they? Well, they still boo. Like the first time that, that I. still happens. Oh, yeah. The first time that I performed, the guy before me lasted seven seconds and he was literally off, off the stage booed off the stage and now here you yeah. are taking that same stage yeah. talk to me about what you're feeling experiencing inside walking on that stage getting ready well i had to give myself a pep talk in the bathroom like olivia you're a boss you can do this okay <laughs> and then i always call my dad before i show and i'm like dad okay that's good okay tell me i can do it and my dad's very like positive but very monotone so he's like olivia you can do this <laughs> And it, I just love it because it's so funny. It's so my dad. So you, so you get on the stage. <laughs> so I you, get on the stage. I'm terrified as hell. And then I make it through the whole song and everybody cheers at the end. And it was like, ah. Well, it was a moment. That's a serious moment. <laughs> yeah. That's an incredible moment. And then you know? to top it all off, I placed in the top three. So that was just like, what? You know, it was cool. Let's talk about the next time you got to play on the yeah. Apollo stage. You were a little more confident at this point, I'm guessing. Yeah. So because then, you lived to tell the tale right. the first time around. Yeah, so then the next time was like very, very steep competition because it's like everybody that placed the time before. So the second, very second time I did it, I didn't place again. But that's cool. Everybody was amazing. It was still a great time. And then I went back the next year, same thing, placed third, went back again. And then I went back a third year. So I've done it three years in a row. When are you going back again? Next year. It's going to be next year now? Yeah. How exciting for yeah. you. How exciting. You, cool. You've done some other cool things I like. Um, some cable some cable network shows. New York City, Bronx, Bronx, Net TV. Yeah. Uh, we were just there the, a these, couple weeks these ago. These three guys behind you? We had a different Cajon player because Seabass is booked all the time. He's so I see. busy. Yeah. A gun for hire? This isn't your primary <laughs> project? He has like 20 primary projects. I don't even want to hear it. Um, this should be your only project. That's you. You work. He works well with this project. He does. I don't want. I'm teasing yeah. you. I'm te good for you, man. Good. We'll we'll get to him a little bit later. Yeah. Um. Let me see. A New York show called So Far Sounds. What's that? Yeah. So Far Sounds is a company that does shows in people's living rooms, coffee shops, living room concerts. Yeah. It's amazing. They're in 246 cities in the world. No kidding. And it's and incredible. you've been on that. Yeah, so we've done two shows in people's living rooms. We did one in Bushwick and one in the East Village. And so basically, uh, like 100 to 150 people just sit in front of you on this person's floor. And you have to be quiet and listen to the music. And that's what it's all about. Very so cool. Nice. Very yeah. cool. Uh, ABC 27 and Fox 43, I assume, are... Pennsylvania. That's Pennsylvania yeah. networks? Yeah, so I'm uh, from uh, Pennsylvania. Affiliates of ABC and Fox. Yeah. And that's where you're from? Yeah, I'm from York, Pennsylvania. So I like to do some hometown shows when I can. Very cool. And Very we actually cool. just played at Moon Dancer Winery in Wrightsville, PA, uh, on Saturday for a Red, White, and Blues Festival. That's exciting. And it was really cool because my whole family was there. So it was oh, great. awesome. Very yeah. cool. Very cool. Um, 
I just learned about this place with the band we had in here uh, last week, uh, Arlene's Grocery in New York City. I thought yeah. it was a grocery store. No, it's a bar. It's awesome. It's a, it's a, it's a live venue showcase. Yeah. And you perform there... Well, I perform there with The Lesson. It's a jam um, that happens every Thursday night. Okay. And so it's just an incredible group of people that you can come up and jam with and come off. And, yeah, it's really cool. It's a great venue. I, I've seen videos. I'm dying to check the place out. Um, talk to me about MetLife Stadium. So I'm also a big sister. I'm part of Big Brother, Big Sister. Really? So... Um, Big Brother Big Sister asked me to sing for an event that they were having at MetLife Stadium. And it was the first time I put in ears, so that was really cool. And I sang the national anthem there, so it was cool. How exciting. Yeah. Very, and these are just a few highlights for you in your short career. About three years old, according to you. Two and a half, three <laughs> years old. Yeah. What a great start. You know how many musicians it takes a decade, a decade and a half before they get to do some of the things you've done? Just a great start for you, kiddo. Very, great very start. Cool. Let's uh, let's get you guys back to work. Let's All keep right. it moving. We'll come back and talk to some of these other fine players. What are we doing next, Olivia? Uh, next, we're doing Drink Up Baby, which is on my album, All at Once. You good to go? Yeah. All right. Well, on the Long Island Blues Warehouse, we must keep it moving with Olivia Castriata. Let's do it. Your hand next to that you've got one, two, three. More and more till you decide it's time to hit the road. But don't worry, my friends, he'll be back again. You just can't let that drinking go. Drink up, baby, cause he takes away. This week's featured artist, Olivia Castriata. Well done, kiddo, as always. Let me chat with you for another second, if I can, Olivia. You talked about the acapella thing you did uh, a while back, and you're doing pop stuff. How'd you get involved in the blues? What 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 created the what was the influence? What what created the interest into the blues direction? I think for you? it was Joss Stone. You know, Joss really? Stone, the grittiness and the soulfulness of her voice just that was a big influence it for just you. Got me. 
yeah. All right. <laughs> so the first song that I was singing like in high school was Dirty Man by Joss Stone. Sure, sure. And I sang it every year for every talent show and every single competition I did. I sang that song. I just loved it so much. From there, what other artists do you appreciate in the blues world or, or, or did you like to follow and, and, and listen to after Josh? Uh, well, I loved Christine Aguilera's album Stripped because okay. I felt like there was a lot of moments in there that were blues influenced. Yeah, exactly. And uh, Etta James, Nina Simone. Um, I love Alan Stone, kind of like Christina Aguilera. Stone. By the way, has a, a, a an album she did a few years back called Back to Basics. Yeah, she's got some serious bluesy stuff in there. I could see you covering. Yeah, I love but, her. Uh, she's you're Etta James fan as well. You said. Yeah. I'm gonna have you know. <laughs> I'm the last guy ever to interview Etta James three months before she passed away. Wow, that's amazing. Speaking of Etta James, um, the Pat, uh, the um, West, West Hampton Performing Arts Center, um, we got to see her. Her sax player is a friend of mine, and uh, we went backstage. We recorded an interview. She wasn't doing so well, and three months later, we lost her. And um, just another great artist. We lost way too soon, but I could see I could see a little bit of uh, that being an influence for you as well. Yeah. Very cool, kiddo. Very cool. Thank I needed you. to share that with you. Let me grab on uh, guitar Stefano De Blasio, if he'll head up to his mic. Good job. Here we are. <laughs> How you doing, Stefano? Good, good. Welcome good to, to the Blues here. Warehouse, my man. Thanks for having me. Where us. are you from? Are you a Brooklyn guy? Brooklyn. I am now. Living in Bushwick, loving it. But I grew up in Florida. Families from South America, traveled a lot, but nice to be in Brooklyn, loving it. Very cool, yeah. very cool. Let's talk about some background and history with this mm -hmm. instrument you're holding. Yeah. Um, you played, or you started at an early age? Fairly early. Uh, a few probably, months ago? Yeah, yeah, like a couple of weeks. At least. Yeah. In the uh, parking lot pulling in. Did you start like at, at age? Not with guitar. Little guy? Gu guitar was more 13, 14. I got really into metal and rock. You went through that phase. Oh, yeah, I had the little Metallica phase for Did a you while. play a different instrument before guitar? Uh, drums. You started on the kit? Drums and piano, yes. Classically yes. trained on the piano? Uh, to some extent. I studied more piano later, but it's, it's really important for any musician of any instrument to play a little piano, even singers. So, Olivia, we're going to have some lessons later. But. Uh, piano is fundamental, and then drums also is really important for any musician. Seabass can tell you a little more about that, probably. You're one, you're one of the d d five to ten percent of those musicians we talked about earlier. I'm guessing that can actually read charts. Yeah, well, that's that's something for the young folks to know that uh, learning to read music will take you much farther than than not you know. being able to read charts. Yes, but really, it's all about what you have to offer musically, but. Learning to read music has definitely helped me, and all of us really work and make it in this field a little more. You know, how did you cross paths with the uh, lovely Olivia? Hmm, were you at a show of mine in Lizanne. in, in Lizanne's show? Yeah, we played with this artist Lizanne, and she was in the audience in Manhattan, and then just oh, we hung and out we till like to the lesson. We went to the lesson at Arlene's grocery. At Arlene's, at Arlene's grocery. grocery. Look yeah. at that full circle coming back, and hung out till like four in the morning. Decided to make music someday, and then. Got some calls from her to play music, and here got we are. together, and uh, you guys clicked musically. And yeah, yeah. how and then, long? How long have you two been working together? Probably like seven, eight months yeah. now. Yeah. Seven, eight months and now. We, we added Sea Bass, and that was a great, uh, great added dynamic, great addition. And then the old, the old William, William the Great over there. But it's been it's been nice to work with Olivia, and so far so good. So far Our so good. Our first gig together was at Pace Magazine in oh, yeah. Manhattan. Mm -hmm. So in January. What'd you do with Pace Magazine? Uh, we did their live at Pace Magazine session, where you go in and you sing three songs, and um, then they show it to the world. Yeah, did you guys do it just as a duet? It was a trio. Oh, it was a trio. Yeah, yeah. yeah it was really beautiful. It was surrounded it was by awesome. all these old recordings. I'm talking like old Hendrix, old Miles Davis, old John Coltrane, old Santana. B-52s, Elton John. Classic That's recordings cool. around you, and then just playing. It was a good, beautiful moment. Yeah. Did you guys get that on video? Uh, yeah, oh, that's on YouTube. See, I'd love that's to see YouTube, that myself. So, yeah, yeah. Me too. You got to point me in that direction. I'm dying Definitely. to see that. All right. Very cool, man. Great beginning for you. Great beginning. Thanks, Keep up the good work, my Thank man. You so much. Do you do anything else other than this project musically? Yes, I play with performing instruments. I play with different singers and groups, and I also do film scoring, jingle writing, that stuff. As well. So New York's a great place for that. So I've had a couple movies I've scored, and a couple artists I accompany happily. Yeah. Stefano de Blasio on guitar. I appreciate that, my man. Well done. Thanks, man. Great dynamic to this project. Keep going strong, my man. Thanks for having Keep us. Keep going strong.
Let's, uh, let's get into another one. We'll come back and talk to the rhythm section. What are we doing next, Olivia? Next is Runaway. It's another original from the album All at Once. You good to go? Yeah. Well, once again, on the Long Island Blues Warehouse, we're going to keep it moving with Olivia Castriata. This week's featured artist, Olivia Castriata. Well done, kiddo. Thank you. As always. A, a common question I get asked by a lot of uh, up-and-coming young musicians that watch this program, uh, the thought process behind how these players that take the stage write tunes. Are you one of those musicians, and I know it's different for everybody, can you say on a Sunday night, well, let's sit down Wednesday and, and, and write a song? <clears throat> or is it something that has to influence you waking up from a dream, something you see driving in the car, being at a restaurant, being somewhere. How, it, it, like I said, it's different for everybody. Yeah, it's Talk to like me about how it works for you. What's happening in my life at the moment. Okay. And I really like to write a song when I'm mad. So basically, if, if you piss me off, I'm going to write about it. <laughs> Great uh, stepping stone yeah. for the blues, um, obviously. Yeah. Uh, but that's a big influence, and things that uh, upset you. Yeah. What about happy things? So... I, I, Getting that I call to go play at the Apollo that doesn't yeah. influence you to write a song? I mean, it should, but... Not yet. I just, I'm, I just get speechless. I can't find the words yet. All right. <laughs> yeah. But if something upsets you that you find to be a common thread for yeah. being able to grab a pen and paper and put down some ideas that are going to yeah. turn into something that you like. And Yeah, and how I write a song is I grab my phone, get my voice memos, and just hit record and start. I sing a melody, and then I'll write down the words, and then I'll... I'll call somebody and say, hey, I'm Somebody in this band? Well, we, Will and I have wrote, written together before. 
We are working on a song. We are halfway <laughs> done the song. Okay. Um, but the album that I have written, I wrote with uh, Shub Saran. Shub Saran? Yeah. He's an amazing He's guitar guitarist. That name um, sounds very familiar. Why would I know that name? You might know him. Why, why would I know that name? He's a jazz guitar player. In jazz the player. From, from India. Great okay. Yeah. Okay. Um, so for the album, I just sang him the tune. And, and then he wrote everything else. It was perfect. <laughs> Okay, so you guys work well together in the songwriting department. Yeah. Very cool, very cool. Oh. A common question I had to ask. Let me grab Will Kenzel on the, uh, on the bass uke, I guess. What's the technical, is that, is that just a ukulele? Um, it's actually a bass uke. Um, it, it is a bass uke. Yeah. Uh, it's kind of a ukulele, but it works the same as a bass. I got it in Arkansas, actually, with Seabass, like, a while back. Um, let's see... What, what what was it, March? And then I've just been practicing with it a lot and it lent itself well to this group. It's gravitated to you. And so far, so good, my man. You play a regular bass too, I, I imagine. Um, yeah. Do you play a stand-up bass? Uh, As well? Yeah, I play a little bit of stand-up. I'm still saving up to get a legitimate, okay. Um, okay. legitimate upright. Do you play an electric bass in this project? Sometimes. It depends on the gig. Depends like, on the um, show. All right. Well, well, yeah, didn't we have electric yesterday? We played 4th of July on a rooftop, and I brought my electric out for that. It was beautiful, a rooftop Brooklyn overlooking the city. <laughs> Very cool, man. Very cool. Let's talk about when you began. Were you a little guy yourself? Um, when I first picked up the guitar, I was about eight. Okay. And um, I kind of switched over to the bass around, I would say, sixth grade, and I would practice a lot with those, and that's kind of like I had a bit of tunnel vision, like I'm going to be a player, except uh, I didn't end up going to Berkeley like them. I ended up going to liberal arts. Going where? To liberal arts school in upstate New York. Doesn't make you a bad guy. I don't, I don't think know. so. I, sometimes at night I wake up and I'm like, what if? How come I didn't go to Berkeley like <laughs> yeah, these guys? Yeah. You're doing fine, my yeah. man. You're doing fine. Thanks. Seriously, you're uh, you're 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 holding down the bottom end real well. I really dig the vibe that you, the great dynamic to this project. Do you do? Have you done other things musically before this project? Um, yeah, I've been in New York about two years, and I actually work with Seabass a lot. He is the person who brought me on. He brought you on to this project. Yeah. Okay. Um, we work a lot together. In fact, could I tell? He was moving uh, last week, and he spent four days like living on my sofa too. So it's like we hang out a lot and play music. Yeah, we're so you guys are pretty tight. Drum and bass, you know, you need to lock in well. I see. <laughs> yeah. All right. Very and, cool. Yeah, I also run a wedding band that opened for Tedeschi Trucks last month. You opened up for Tedeschi Trucks? Yeah. Where was that? Uh, Greenwich Town Party. Well, you, you know, know we're working on getting that. Tedeschi Trucks to stand on this stage and perform. Talk to we're working on that right now Susan. as we speak. Yeah, talk to Susan. We, we talk to who? Susan. We are. We, we're, <laughs> we're, we're trying to work it out now. Yeah, a buddy of mine, a partner of mine that runs a lot of, we do a lot of uh, children charities here on Long Island. My partner, partner Frank, goes to see them every time they're in town. And uh, he's spoken to them about this show on several occasions. So we'll see what happens. We'll see what happens. If, but if you uh, get them here, ask them to do the song that her and Derek harmonize in like the first minute. Oh my God, it's beautiful. Oh, so many of their songs. Sorry. I'll, 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 I'll make a mental note of that and make sure that I ask. But uh, I appreciate it. Will Kensell on the Kensell, am I saying that right? Yes. Will Kensell on the bass uke. Thank you, sir. I appreciate that. We're going to come back and talk to the beatbox player, otherwise known as the Cajon player, shortly. But um, let's get into another tune. We got, we got time to get, um, let me see. We've done five. You have eight. We'll, we'll get them all in. All right. We'll get them all in. Let's so it. let's do another one. We'll come back and talk to the cone player. What are we doing next, Olivia? Next is another original called Call Your Lady. You good to go? Yeah. Long Island Blues Warehouse. If you join this late, shame on you. Secondly, this is Olivia Castriata.
knew that ending was going to creep up on me fast. <laughs> Olivia Castriata. Well done, kiddo, Thank as you. always. Let me uh, talk to uh, Sebastian Seabass Chiribog Chiriboga. GD Boga. We'll stick to Seabass at the moment back there on the, on the beatbox, otherwise known as the Cajon. Hey, How you doing, my man? I'm doing really well. You How sound you? good up there, man. Thank you. you sound Thank good. You so much. I, I trust you do play a, a regular drum kit as well. I do. Yeah. Did you start at an early age? Uh, not really. I started kind of late. I started uh, when I was 14. Why so late? Um, I didn't realize that I liked playing drums until then, I guess. What was the influence? Uh, I my friend had a drum kit at his place. I started playing on it, and he's like, "Whoa, that's really cool!" So it kind of boosted my ego a little bit. And so then, that's all it took. Play. That's all it took. That's all it took. <laughs> that's all it took. And then I decided to join the school band, and then uh, from there, I just started playing with a bunch of different people. The, and some of those different people, I trust you still play with today. We no. talked about earlier how you do a bunch of other things. Yeah, no, none of because I there. I'm from Virginia. And none of them moved. Wh to what New part? York. Virginia Beach. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Just mm -hmm. south of Richmond, an hour or two. Yep. Very cool. Very mm -hmm. cool. Um, when did you move up here? Uh, November of 2013. Just a few mind? short years ago. Yeah. And how did you get involved in uh, the lovely Olivia and this so project? I was involved with another project, and actually, Shub was sharing the Shub Saran, the guitar player. Um, was sharing the bill with me. Um, and then Olivia heard uh, my, my group's play. Um, and then she came up and gave me her business card, and then I heard from her a year later. Why a year later? Can we get her mic on, Steve? Oh, yeah, say that, say that. Say it again? I was playing hard to get. <laughs> you were playing hard to get. A year of playing hard to get. Yeah, it worked. <laughs> did you it remember worked. who she was a year later? I did, actually. I was, wait, I was waiting for that phone said, call. Oh, Olivia! I was. I was like, Just what? Like that. <laughs> I was like, Pleasant finally, surprise out of nowhere, huh? She yeah. finally like responded back, yeah. A year? What took you so long to get a hold of him? Well, I was playing with a full band, so I was okay. playing with a 10-piece band. A 10-piece? Yeah. What was that project called? Uh, well, that was my album that I released as a 10-piece project. I see. Uh, so then it just got so complicated with schedules, and I was like, let's strip this down. Mm -hmm. So that's why I wanted to do this smaller group, the, more intimate. The, the, core, the core four. Yeah. Oh, oh. A raw, stripped-down oh, dynamic. That's oh. a good name. Maybe that'll be the name of the next <laughs> album. I don't know. <laughs> oh, Maybe. Yeah. Very cool, very cool. <laughs> what are you doing outside of this project now, musically? You doing um, stuff in the city? Yeah, I'm pretty much a hired gun for anyone that needs drums on their stuff. So when the phone rings, and I assume it does quite often. Yeah. It, she talked it, about earlier how you're not always available for gigs. Yeah. That's, that this isn't the primary thing. project for you? I don't, I don't really have a primary project. I, I kind of play for a bunch of different the people. The answer is yes. Olivia is my primary <laughs> Olivia project. Olivia is my... Well, I'm playing hard to get, too. So if you have another gig and Olivia says, we, we need you, you cancel the first gig to do the Olivia I'm gig. I'm like, okay, maybe I'll do that. If you bring snacks. If you bring snacks. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Fair enough. I'll tell you, great dynamic, man. I love, uh, I love the feel the Cajon gives anyway. Yeah. There's not enough... Blues acts out there with the cajon, in my opinion, mm -hmm. and um, well done, my man. Thank you. You uh, you play a full kit as well, though. You yep. with, with other th with other projects. Sometimes I do both cajon and a kit at the same time. At the same time, yeah. I don't think so. It's magic. You mean on the same gig? On the same gig. That I can well, understand. Well, at the same time, I replace the throne with a cajon. I and you see. Can play okay, and, yeah, I can yeah. see that working. Nice. I can see that working. Sebastian Seabass Chiriboga on yes. the cajon. I thank you, sir. We got time for um, two more. All right. You have two more to do, don't you? Let's do it. Let's do uh, the next one. We'll do our goodbyes, and then you'll play us out. Right. What are we doing next, Olivia? Are you going to be my girl? It's a cover. I'm you know already it? married. I'm sorry. <laughs> oh, I thought you were asking me a question. Um, I had to do it. But forgive me. Um, this is an original? No, this is a cover by the Jets. Oh, the Jets. Oh, I know the song you're going to do. Oh, very cool. You good to go? You guys good to go? Long Island Blues Warehouse, we're going to keep it moving. And once again, this is Olivia Castriata.
take my hand and come to me Because you look so fine and I really want to make you mine Said you look so fine and I really want to make you mine Four, five, six, come on and get your kicks Now you don't need no money with a face like that, do ya, honey? Big black boots, long blonde hair She's so sweet with her jet black stare I could see you home with me But you were with another man, yeah I know we ain't got much to say Before I let you get away, yeah I said, are you gonna be my girl? Take my hand and come with me Cause you look so fine And I really, really, really wanna make you mine Four, five, six, come on and get your kicks Now you don't need no money when you look like that, do ya, honey? Very well done, Olivia Castriata on the Blues Warehouse. What a great rendition. What a great rendition. Thank you so Steve much. Steve and I are laughing inside on how cool that was. What Woo! made you pick that song out to, to do as a cover? Well, I was just working on a bunch of covers at one point. And I was like, ooh, I just, like It's this. not a song I would have, w would have ever expected. Well, and, me neither, uh, but it just came on the playlist on YouTube. And I was very like, cool. I can dig it. I'm holding in my hand, Ralph, if you can get this. Um, her CD, your debut CD. What's the name of the CD, please? All at Once. All at Once. This just came out, what, about a year ago? Yeah, last July. You've got eight uh, originals on this thing? Eight originals. Fair. It's on iTunes, Google Play, Pandora. Uh, you can also find me on Facebook, Instagram, Twitter. Spell your name so people can follow you, please. It's Olivia, O-L-I-V-I-A, Castriata, C A S. T R I O T A. And the CD can be found in all the digital outlets? It's everywhere. It's everywhere. Well, I'm, uh, I'm excited to play some of this on my Friday live show, work you through the rotation. All right. The thing you okay. just did, the Jet song, I'm going to play this Friday. All I'm going right. to have to play that Friday because my audience is going to get a kick out of that, cool. I think. And uh, well done, Olivia. It was great having you in here. Thank you so much for having me. You're going to play us out, but before you do, let's do some goodbyes. We're going to start with over here in guitar, Mr. Stefano de Blasio. Thank you, sir. Having great me. having you in here today. Back there on the cajon, Sebastian Seabass Chiriboga. Oh. 
Thank you, thank you. Thank you, Seabass. Mm -hmm. Over there on the base, Uke, we've got Will Kensell. Thank you, Will. And last, but certainly not least, the lovely and incredibly talented with the beautiful, beautiful tone to her voice, Miss Olivia Castriata. Thank you so much, Olivia. Thank you. It was an absolute pleasure having you in here today. Yeah, this is so fun. Thank what you What do you so think? Much. Can we do live radio on my Friday show? Let's the do only it. problem is that's from 8 to 10 a.m. Uh, I hear you. I, I hear you. get up that early. It's, it's rough. It, it, I just had New York City players come out and do it last month. And it's, any musician that comes, they wish it was 6 o'clock at night and you go on at 9.15 in the morning. Yeah. A lot of coffee. You think you can handle that challenge? You can do it. Warm up vocally it. and belt four or five out uh, on live radio? Yeah. And then maybe play for the kids at Stony Brook Hospital? I would love it. Up on the it. pediatric floor? Let's do it. I appreciate that. It's a date. That's a deal, and I'm going I'm to hold you to that. I thank you. Before you play us out, uh, just a reminder to check out this studio, EKO Studios, at ekoproductions.com. They are the official studio of the Long Island Blues Warehouse. For the Blues Warehouse, I'm Mark Klein at liblues.com. Don't forget to check out my live show on Friday mornings from 8 to 10 a.m. every Friday morning at 90.1 FM here on Long Island. Outside of the range at WUSB.FM or LIBlues.com. That having been said, we're going to say thank you one more time to this incredible talent, this amazing ensemble. I thank you again as you play us out one more time. We say goodbye. And thank you, my dear. Thank you. This is Olivia Castriata. I'm a steamroller for you, baby. I'm bound to roll all over you. Said yes, I'm. For you, baby I'm bound to roll All over you Oh yeah I'm gonna Inject your soul With some sweet Rock and roll And show you For our rhythm I'm a semen mixer for you, baby. I'm a junior of burning fun. I'm a semen mixer for you, baby. A junior of
I'm a steamroller for you, baby.